When shooting film, you have a variety of different things to be worrying about while just trying to take a simple photo. From loading the camera correctly, getting the right exposure, correct settings, it is important to build out your photography experience to be as user-friendly as possible. Whether it be owning a specific piece of equipment or using a different piece of gear more optimally, there are a handful of things that I've added to my photography kit that makes it significantly easier when I'm out on location shooting. First and foremost is a handheld light meter. For me, I own a Siconic L408, which allows me to capture accurate light information, allowing me to ensure correct exposure for each and every shot. This is especially important for my medium format cameras or my cameras that don't have a light meter, as any wasted shot is just wasted money. After all, the light is what makes the photo, generally. Now, you don't need quite as nice of one as mine, but like many things, the more you invest, the more functions, better quality, and more time before you'll have to purchase a new one. Next up is a shutter release cable and sturdy tripod. I feel as though these two might go without saying, so I'll just keep it brief. If you want to be shooting anything on a low shutter speed, you will need a release cable. It will reduce camera shake at low shutter speeds, allowing for more creative decision making and letting you capture low light or night scenes. Now, you'll need a sturdy tripod to cohesively use together with your camera and shutter release, which will allow you to fully control your camera to its fullest potential. I wouldn't suggest buying a super cheap one though, as those tend to break much easier than the middle of the road ones. Next up is cleaning wipes. You can't be taking photos reliably with dirty lenses. And if you're anything like me, my cameras are first and foremost tools, so they end up getting dirty, not babied. Thus, having a way to clean them, especially the lenses, without damaging them or putting micro scratches all over is extremely important. I have some Zeiss lens cleaners from my local grocery store that are meant for lenses, glasses, etc. and I think they work great. Now there are some camera and lens specific ones that I've seen people really enjoy but I've had good results with these so far. They're cheap and I can find them locally so I'm in no rush to upgrade. Fourth on the list is a film camera strap. Now, shooting like 95% of my work handheld, I actually opted for not having a camera strap on for the longest time for whatever reason. Now that I have a really nice high quality one on my Mamiya 7, I wouldn't skimp out on it. This one I have is from Anna Bags and my friend Colin actually gifted it to me in this brown leather. But there are a ton of different corded options I've seen cheap on Amazon that I think personally are much better than nothing, believe me. Being able to have the peace of mind to not shatter your expensive camera is honestly so nice and the strap is... I think of sort of an insurance policy for said camera. Plus, there are tons of minimally colored and designed ones, so you're sure to find one that interests you. Next on the list is film camera cases. These have been an absolute life-saving when it comes to moving your gear long distances. Whether it be flying or driving cross-country in my 4Runner, these gun cases make for incredible budget camera cases. I carry my RB67, Mamiya 7, Contax T2, light meter, loads of film and accessories in one, and then my drone equipment in the other. Purchased at Harbor Freight or at pretty much any local tool and equipment store, they work great and are a fraction of the cost of name brand Pelican cases. Next up are my neoprene camera holders. On the flip side, if I'm moving a smaller portion of my gear via a backpack or putting gear in a duffel bag, having these neoprene camera covers give me confidence that no matter where the camera is, it's safe. The extra cushioning and soft carpet-like texture ensure that the camera will be safe even when in a normal day-to-day -day backpack. There's plenty of times I'll throw my Mamiya 7 in this thing for a day trip and I may never even bring it out, but knowing it's in there, safe from dust and debris and ready to use is always motivating and gives me peace of mind. Huge shout out my old roommate John, I don't even think he knows that I stole this from him, but he let me borrow one of these and it was so nice that I literally couldn't give it back, so I think that's a testament in and of itself. Hopefully he doesn't watch this. Next up is a spent film carrier. Now, prior to last summer, I would have been actively against spent film carriers, but the more film I shoot and the longer shoots or road trips I go on, I now totally understand the appeal of these, what I thought were marketing gimmicks. But now, when I've been traveling, trying to keep track of all my things together in their respective places on top of keeping track of my film rolls and my shot film rolls can be quite tricky. Especially when I'm out overlanding, it's easy to lose track of a single roll if there's not one consolidated place for all of them. Thus, having a baggie or place for these spent rolls becomes much more important. For me, I have Willem Verbeek's brand Long Weekends Pouch, which has been quite nice. 
It's a sturdy, robust, non-rip bag with two pouches allowing you to carry your film, your new film, and used film together in separate areas. It is also quite a larger bag allowing you a good amount of room yet is able to be squished and broken down quite small into your backpack or a camera case. That being said, this bag is super affordable and I prefer this instead of the plastic hard cases that I think are much more traditional but don't give you as much flexibility or room. Up next is gaff tape. Now this is something that I just recently started to throw in my bag, which technically I use electrical tape, but it's pretty much the same thing. For me, carrying it is so I can cover some of the light leak areas on my problematic RB67 back, but also have used it in a variety of different ways, either rigging something up, covering logos on my cameras when I'm in a bigger city, taping something that might have been broken, etc. Having some type of black adhesive material can be quite beneficial when out and about in the field shooting, so I carry it. And last, but I think certainly not least, is 35mm to 120 spools. Now, this one might be a bit of a reach, but I think it is something that many people should give more of a shot. Albeit quite niche, I notice that many people, photographers or not, are interested by these 35mm shots that are exposed over their holes. That sounds horrible. This is achieved by loading 35mm into a medium format camera via 3D printed holders, which tricks the medium format camera into thinking it's 120 film thus exposing the entire film roll holes included again doesn't sound great while some shots are much cooler than others having this creative different i almost want to say aesthetic tool is super satisfying and leans so so heavily into that film look which we all obviously love these can be found for like 10 bucks on ebay for some 3d printed spools and you can probably find them much cheaper if you have someone either print them or find the plans for you these accessories were some of the most important and fun ones that I could think of when it comes to shooting film photography. Some more necessary than others, but all will make a significant improvement in your workflow with your cameras. Is there any accessories or things you carry in your bag that you think I missed? I'm interested to know and hear down in the comments below. Otherwise, what's one thing that you could not shoot without? For me, it's definitely the light meter. Trying to go from my professional light meter back to the phone and feel like I'm getting accurate readings is just, it doesn't feel right. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. And until next time, peace out.